Jumping on the hype of the recent show House of Dragon, let's talk about dragons. They're an intimidating mythological reptile. Dragons have cemented their place as a staple fictional entity. But what if they weren't just fiction? What if I told you, using science, dragons could exist? In fact, the technology exists. So could we recreate dragons? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to cover in today's video. Welcome to Shrouded Science, where we explore the science and maths of the world around us. So spoiler alert, dragons obviously do not exist. But the building blocks of dragon and dragon-like creatures do exist in the natural world. So let's go down the evolutionary supermarket and build ourselves a dragon. Dragons in popular media have some variety, from traditional fire-breathing dragons to creepier bone wraiths or ice-breathing dragons. Let's keep things traditional and go for the most common dragon characteristics. In no particular order, dragons have the defining features which are their reptilian looks, their carnivorous diet, they lay eggs, they have strong scaly skin, and most obviously, they can fly and breathe fire. We can actually tick off most of these characteristics by going down a single branch of the evolutionary tree. Dragons have a reptilian lizard-like appearance, and additionally they lay eggs. This is a characteristic of most reptiles. One such reptile is a deceptively named Komodo dragon. It's not surprising to see where the inspiration for the name arises. A Komodo dragon has a chainmail-like skin with thousands of tiny bone deposits. These deposits are called osteoderms, and they increase in strength as the dragon ages. Choosing reptile-like features also ticks off the features of egg laying, which most reptiles satisfy as well as a significant proportion of reptiles being carnivorous. Now we move on to the more interesting rare characteristics, starting off with the fact that dragons can fly. But wait a minute, there are plenty of birds and flying creatures in general, but nothing on the sheer scale of dragons can fly. There is a general rule called the square cube law, and it states that as an object increases in size, its volume increases by a larger factor than its surface area. This means that we can't simply take a hawk or a pigeon or any other flying animal and apply their characteristics to something on the size of a dragon. The mechanics just simply would not work. So is there a creature in nature that existed on this scale? Well yes, but we have to rewind time and look at something that is now extinct. The Quetzalcoatlus is a pterosaur giraffe sized flying reptile that is thought to be the largest flying animal of all time. It has an enormous wingspan of over 12 meters. This puts it on the same scale as a mid sized aircraft. So we almost have all the features to complete our dragon, but we are missing the most key element and a feature that demonstrates the intimidation factor the most. It is, of course, fire breathing. This is the most difficult to find in nature, and we have to start looking very small to find this characteristic. To date, no identified creature has demonstrated the ability to breathe fire. So we have to get creative and find the nearest match. The Bombardier beetle stores chemicals in its abdomen, which when threatened are released mixing into the air undergoing a violent exothermic chemical reaction releasing a tremendous amount of heat. Taking this inspiration, dragons could store flammable reactive compounds that when combined would ignite to produce fire. The only remaining component is how we gather these characteristics to fuse them into a dragon. This is where we enter the realm of genetic engineering. DNA carries all of the information for the development and functioning of an organism. It is a code that is translated to produce proteins, which are the complex molecules that do most of the work in an organism. Each characteristic is likely coded in DNA. So what we require now is to determine specifically how each characteristic is coded and combine them into a single instruction set. But to combine these genes, we need to use a technology called CRISPR. It was built on decades of prior research and finally developed by Emanuela Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna. CRISPR is able to match and bind to specific patterns within the DNA and create an incision. This opens up the avenue for a host of new genetic techniques to be applied. And in our case, we will be introducing DNA sequences that code for dragon-like characteristics. Whilst we have proposed a fantastical use of CRISPR technology, it is actually having profound effects on the world around us. The obvious uses that are being explored currently are cures for genetic diseases such as cancer, but also for genetic engineering for applications such as agriculture, with disease-resistant crops. Scientists are currently attempting to bring back species from extinction, with the potential recreation of the great passenger pigeon. This had become extinct in 1914. Similar efforts are being expanded towards the woolly mammoth and the Tasmanian tiger. Perhaps the creation of dragons may not be that far-fetched after all. This is Shrouded Science, where we explore the science and maths of the world around us. Subscribe for more videos.